Christ and body, our spirit, for the reading of the gospel. Uh, the, the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus with it was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and me? My hour has not yet come. His mother then said to the servants, well, do whatever he tells you. Now, standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water, and they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. Well, when the steward tasted the water that had become wine, he did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. And the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine, after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the, the first of his signs, in Cana in Galilee, and reveals his glory, and his disciples believed in him. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. You may be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As some of you know, Heather and I have a niece and nephew on a winery up in Traverse City. And I always wondered, I wondered what the early man and woman, when they learned to make wine, did they think it was some kind of a miracle, or at least some kind of a mystery? Picture some historic person, this prehistoric person, putting a bunch of grapes into a stone jar and then you know, getting busy hunting pterodactyls or something uh, for a week or so, and then they totally forget all about those grapes. So they imagine, imagine their surprise when they finally came back and find that whole business bubbling and gurgling like a house of fire. Now, that amazing process, as you are well aware, is what they call fermentation. Now, fermentation is an important process in this world, and of course, not just for making, wor making wine. In ancient times, fermentation was used not only for beverages, but for cheese, for certain textile processes, for tanning leather, and of course, for the formation that yeast causes in bread. At its root, though, fermentation is pretty simple overall. You need some grapes and some water, some sugar in a jar for a while, and you wind up with wine. As some of you know, I spent my some couple of years as a prison guard, and the inmates knew how to make hooch uh, in that way by sticking it in the toilet for a while, but it came out to be well, it, something fermented. <laughs> now, it's one of nature's most simple miracles. One of the many miracles that's built into the fiber and structure of this world that we live in. And we marvel at this miracle along with others that we've associated with water. But fermentation, as you probably are aware, is a slow miracle. The complete natural fermentation process, it takes weeks. But imagine that miracle that takes place immediately. Now that would be a double miracle. Now imagine that miracle taking place with no grapes. Now that would be a triple miracle. Water turning into wine, a triple miracle. And it all happened in a little town called Cana in Galilee somewhere around 2,000-ish years ago. And it happened because there was a wedding. And almost as importantly, there was a wedding reception. It happened because Mary, the wife of Joseph, the mother of Jesus, was there. 
And it happened because her son came along. And her son took the order, ordinary, simple, plain water and he changed it into wine. And it was a miracle. Now, it was a strange and quiet, and it's a private miracle, but it was a miracle nevertheless. There's no hocus pocus about it. There's no flash of lightning. There were no magical words or incantations. In fact, it was such a subtle, silent miracle that only Mary and the servants really knew what happened. One minute, there were six jars of water, each holding up to 30 gallons. And the next minute, there was about 180 gallons of wine. Ah, miracles. We all dream of miracles to one extent or another. We all dream that something life-changing will happen to us. Maybe that lotto number is going to hit. Maybe for some of you, that handsome knight will come riding on a great white horse and swoop you up in your arms, in his arms. Or that our ship will finally make it to the dock. Sometimes we long for life to take on new meaning, a new purpose, a new direction. That there is new excitement in our lives. Maybe we feel like we missed out on something somehow. Maybe we identify with that uh, old lady who was celebrating her 100th birthday and she sat rocking on her front porch with her glasses down by her no on her nose. And, gr and one of her kids said, Grandma, you must sing a lot in the last 100 years. And the old lady snapped and said, Not much. Every time I, it was always over by the time I found my darn glasses. The columnist Sam Landers once had told about what she learned about people through the letters that she always received. She wrote, quote, Since I began writing this column, I learned plenty, including, meaningfully, what Leo Rostens had in mind when he said, quote, Each of us is a little lonely deep inside and cries to be understood. I've learned how it is with the stumbling, tortured people in this world who have nobody to talk to. The fact that the column has been such a success underscores, for me at least, he wrote, the central tragedy of our society. The disconnectedness, the insecurity, the fear that bedevils, cripples, even paralyzes so many of us. She wrote, I learned that financial success, academic achievement, and social or political status, or the open no doors or peace of mind or inner security. We are all wanderers like sheep on this planet in which we live. So the question is, is, is there any hope? Hope for those of us who feel like we live dull, listless lives, longing for something, longing for anything that can give meaning or color or, or purpose to the lives we live? Well, the biblical answer is, of course there is. And this deeper meaning of the miracle we hear of, and the, the mir deeper meaning is in the miracle that we hear about in today's gospel. The setting today, as I told you, is a feast during a wedding reception in Cana of Galilee. The wine is running low, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, is concerned about the embarrassment it might cause to the family. So she spoke to Jesus about it. And nearby, there were some stone jars reserved for the Jewish rites of purification. And she, and, and she said, she told Jesus to do something. And Jesus went to the servants and said, fill the jars with water. So they filled the jars with water to the brim. Now draw some out and take them to the steward of the feast. So they took it. And when the steward tasted the water, now become wine, he exclaimed to the bridegroom, everybody serves the, the good wine first, but then when they, become drink, when they become drunk, when they become sloshed, then the, poor wine, the bad wine is served, because how are they going to know the difference? But you, you've kept the good wine until no, now. You know, that's, that's kind of the change that Christ can make. You know, turning dull, flat, colorless, tasteless water into something that was rich and rewarding, exciting, and challenging. You know, doctors tell us that 
drinking water is good for us. And we're supposed to drink, what, about eight or so glasses every day? But most of us don't prefer not to drink just plain, simple water. We want something more. And Jesus, well, Jesus offers us something more. The deeper meaning, you see, of this miracle are the changes that Christ can make in your lives and in my life. Now, one miracle Christ can do is to help give us a change of mental attitude. In C.S. Lewis's book, The Great Divorce, Lewis gives a description and the geography, landscape, and strategy of heaven and hell. And in the book, Lewis makes it very clear that in his opinion, hell is a place that people choose, not a place where they're sent. Think about that. He says that your life can be heaven, or your life can be hell. It's you that can choose. You can choose. You, you don't have to let life defeat you. You can go through hell on the outside and have a little bit of heaven on the inside, you know. And Christ can do that for you. If you let Christ do that for you. Christ can also give you a new mission in life. You know, there was once a young woman by the name of Anne Walter Fern who went to China many years ago as a medical missionary. Now, Anne's mother was terribly anxious about Anne's safety on the trip out to China, so she gave the girl a $20 gold piece in which to send back a one-word cable upon her landing. And that word was supposed to be safe, that she had arrived safe. Well, this young missionary did indeed send back a one-word cablegram, but she didn't send the word safe. The word she sent back was delighted. Delighted. And boy, that word delighted is a far more jubilant and far more, frankly, Christian word than just safe. Going from maintaining the same old, same old, we've always done it that way before mindset into a mission mindset, that, that is a key step, my friends in Christ, in turning the water of our lives into wine. You know, back in 1958, Dallas Cowboys football coach Tom Landry made that same discovery in his own journey as he came to know more fully the Lord Jesus Christ. After he became more Christ-centered, he said, quote, I became a person with goals that went beyond winning and losing of football games. Jesus Christ, our Lord, you see, made a change in Tom Landry's life. And Landry developed a, a new mental attitude, a new mission, a new motivation, and a new measure of his own self-worth. Yes, my family of faith, yes, Jesus Christ can indeed work miracles. Jesus Christ can take a dull, colorless, drab existence and turn it into exciting, meaningful, and purposeful adventure. I have come, Jesus said, that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Yes, indeed, Jesus Christ can change water into wine. And yes, Jesus can change you too, if you are open to it. Amen.